Thank you. I wonder how many of you have encountered this sort of scenario. Ah, there you are, just the person I wanted. Uh, we need to recruit. Get it sorted out, will you? Of course, you weren't here last time. Yeah, it's bad business, that. Mm, I'm sure you'll be all right. Be fine. Let me keep you in the loop. Keep me in the loop and uh, let me know how you get on, won't you? Yes, fine, boss. Absolutely. No problem at all. Looking forward to it. Great, great opportunity. Thank you so much. Oh, no. Now what? OK, you've now got to look at the recruitment. This is where my top number one tip comes in, and I'm going to give it to you straight away. This is my number one tip, very important, must be done. Always, 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 when recruiting, make absolutely sure, 100%, that you have someone to interview. <laughs> now you laugh, and thank you for that. <laughs> But you'll be surprised that number of phone calls I get saying, well, we've been trying to advertise for the last couple of months, uh, not getting anything, not getting anybody to apply for it, um, haven't got anybody coming along, don't know what we're doing, can you help? Now, if you're in one of those industries uh, that uh, has a notorious difficulty in um, getting people to apply, and you'll know who you are, I don't be able to help you, I don't think, as much as I sympathise for all the uh, difficulties that you've got yourself in, uh, but it's your fault, shouldn't have joined if you can't take a joke. But let's say it's not that. Let's say you're in an industry that's normally fairly okay for advertising, normally okay for getting lots of uh, applicants coming forward, um, so there's something gone wrong. Normally it'll come down to one of two things, and it'll always be to do with the advert. Now the first advert is the one uh, which uh, I like to call the prospectus. It will tell you absolutely everything you want to know about the company. It will tell you how wonderful the company is, how it was uh, formed by uh, a bewhiskered gentleman from uh, 1800 and frozen to death, um, who now stares at you from the boardroom wall, um, and how wonderful the, uh, the, the staff are, and how it's a big family and everybody loves everybody else. And it's a wonderful company, it's a lovely company, really great. And you phone them back and say, fabulous company, sounds like this is a really, really nice company to work for. And of course they say, yes it is, it's brilliant, it's lovely. Why wouldn't you want to come and work for us? Um, not really mentioned anything about the job, oh, haven't we? No, not really, no, not, not in so many words, well not in fact not in any words at all really. Um, and they come back with, uh, do, do you think we should? Well, it wouldn't hurt, try that, see what happens. And then you've got the other sort, the other one, uh, which I like to call the aspirational one. That advert will tell you, uh, must have this, must have that, must be something else, must have done this, must have done that, must have done all this lot. And when you get to the end, you get the idea, it's must, must, must all the way down. And when you get to the end, there's a lovely little TLA, which is the three letter acronym in case you're wondering, um, which says, national minimum wage. And you phone these guys back and say, OK, um, you do seem to want an awful lot of things for your national minimum wage. Ah, yes, obviously we don't need all that. No, of course, obviously you don't. Of course you don't. Uh, how many people did you say you had applying? Um, well, none. <laughs> well, maybe not so obvious. Oh, uh, yeah. Do you think perhaps we should um, take some out? I usually try and resist saying, obviously, but sometimes, you know, I just can't resist. <laughs> it's just one of those things. OK, so let's say you've got the advert right and you've got lots of people applying. Fantastic. The next problem is, uh, and to quote the Bard, or paraphrase the Bard, uh, to interview or not to interview. Now that really is the question. I particularly, um, the one I particularly like, the guy um, who is usually um, a, a small business, uh, probably run by, by one chap, um, who um, likes to go with the gut. The gut. The gut will tell me. 
don't quite know who I want, but I'll know it when I see it. Fabulous. <laughs> but absolutely, oh, how exciting. That's really exciting. That's living on the edge. To me, it's a little bit like uh, going to a car auction. Um, you go along, you don't need to worry about looking at all the cars. It's just a mess. You don't need to go out there. There's lots of people. It's just lots of cars. Forget it. You don't need to do the research. Don't need it. Don't need to pick up the, the runners and riders from the auction. You just need to go and grab yourself a nice tea-flavoured drink and a nice meat-flavoured burger. Um, then go and sit in the ring and wait. And there it is. You can wait. And you can wait. And eventually, that's it. That's the one I want. That's the one for me. A nice exotic little number. One owner. Fabulous. And then you get it home. And then you find out why it's exotic. It's exotic because it comes from a Backstreet Paris uh, workshop which specialises in rather dodgy car rentals. <laughs> and some idiots changed the steering wheel onto the other side of the uh, car. <laughs> How did that happen? But you can't lose face. You've now got it. It's yours. So it becomes a project. I'll get it working. It's fine. I'll get it working. It won't be a problem. I'll get it working. So it sits there and it looks at you and it's there all the time. And it's not working. It's not working for you. It's not working at all. It's just not working. But it just sits there. But there's always back to the car auctions. Yes, how exciting. Go and have another go. If you're with uh, a large corporation, or you're with, um, for uh, example, um, one of the public sectors, you, you're pretty much hogtied to what you can do. It's pretty much questions are going to be generated around um, uh, the um, uh, competency-based uh, exercise. Now, I do quite a lot of, of mock interviews, and I'm reasonably confident that I can train most people to get through a competency-based interview. Some of the, uh, the, the uh, especially the um, public sector companies uh, and units, um, are very helpful. They'll tell you what they're going to ask questions about, which is really nice, really helpful of them. So all we need now is three competencies on each, three uh, examples of each of those competencies. Train up on that, no problem at all. The only problem becomes then uh, if you can't remember them or um, you fall over from some other way. The other problem is, of course, uh, if you really have a great difficulty in getting through interviews because you block out when you get to an interview, that's not so easily trainable. You can always go a little bit off-piste. Now, I like the off-piste ones. They're great. Some sort of uh, question that might be uh, landed at you. Um, some of my favourites. I'll just give you a couple. If you were a dinosaur, what sort of dinosaur would you be? Well, do you know, at my age, sometimes I think I've already arrived at that. <laughs> would you rather fight 100 duck-sized horses or a horse-sized duck. That's a famous one. Now, I've given that some thought, and I've asked the question a few times about that, uh, and just to see what people come up with. Personally, I'd go with the big duck. If I can train the big duck, get it in a tent, travel around the country, get people to pay to come and have a look at the big duck, I then wouldn't have to work for a company that's asking me stupid questions. <laughs> The one that really gets everybody, the one that I always use on an interview when I'm doing mock interviews, the one that really, really stretches people and really makes it difficult for them, and it's always delivered with a smile. Tell me something about yourself. That gets them every time. It's great. Blank over. Sweat. Start the interview with that, you've got them dead. But do you really want to be doing that? What sort of things are you actually looking for? I'll give you some, to me, some last thoughts on, on what I think uh, the, the interview process should, should be. First of all, let me just look at the, the, um, the advert side of things. 
if you're advertising, are you actually advertising and encouraging people to apply for this? Or are you disencouraging them? If you're not encouraging them, why not? Is it that you're looking for that one special person, that one person that just might just happen to be free at the time, might just happen to be able to come and work for you and wants to work for you, and you're taking a bit of a risk? Because if you can't find that one person, you're never going to get there. Are you worried that you're going to get too many? Too many applications? That's something I hear a lot. But if you've got that, at least you've got the chance of getting the right person. You've got the right person who might just have those skills that you can convert into what you want and how you want to do it and how you want to train them to come into your company. At the end of it, if you've managed to succeed and you've done well and everything's good and you've got the right person and the right thing, then you can become the superhero of the company. And I think you've earned the right to put your underpants on outside of your trousers, if you so wish, and don the cape and put the tiara on, if that's what suits. And then you can adopt the pose and say, yes, I am the superhero of the company. And yes, you've got the job for life. <laughs> no! Thank you.